What's up guys, my name is Robin and welcome back to my E3 2016 press conference reviews. Now, in this video we're going to be talking about Bethesda. Um, Bethesda actually... I mean, I, ha I still haven't seen the Sony conference yet, so I don't know how that went, but for me, out of the three developer conferences, Bethesda have definitely kind of almost stolen the show. It'd be a toss-up between them and Ubisoft, and obviously Ubisoft is that a little bit bigger, but Bethesda have some really great stuff coming out over the next year and beyond that. So, we're going to talk about the first thing they talked about, and that was Quake Championships. Now, I have I played Quake a long time ago. I haven't played Quake in a long time. Um, a Quake Championships is going to be on PC only. Um, it's going to be kind of like an arena style um, multiplayer game uh, for PC and it looks it looks great. It's, it's kind of gone back to old school Quake with that little bit extra. Oh, my cat's looking at me. <laughs> with that little bit extra new on it. So that was looking really cool and I think the big thing for that was because it's on PC only, um, they were able to um, they're able to publish it so that it runs at 120 uh, hertz and with unlocked frame rates, which is huge. So a lot of PC games have unlocked frame rates anyway, um, but this with the graphics that were, the, that were running in this game that we saw, for that to have unlocked frame rates is pretty phenomenal. So that was really cool. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Quake because I don't know too much about where it is these days and I know it's still quite a big thing um, they talked a little bit about QuakeCon and uh, Quake Champions is going to be there uh, this year I think they said it was in August um, so you guys can play it there if you go there but you know it's, it's, it's still a long work in progress I think I don't actually know when that's going to be coming to the public so anyway yeah Quake Champions looks really good um, I probably won't play it because I don't my uh, cause I, <laughs> I don't really like playing big multiplayer games on PC I don't really like play, playing big modern game games anyway, but you know I, I play them even less on PC than I do on my console. So there we go. That's Quake uh, Quick Championships. Um, the Elder Scrolls Legends, um, which is a PC, Mac, and uh, handheld device uh, card strategy game. Um, there was a lot about that and. You know they made a big deal about it, and again, I'm not going to talk too much about it because, as good as it looks, it's it's not something that interests me. I mean, I really like the Elder Scrolls games. They, I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit, but I just I don't really have any interest in the card game. It looks good. It looks like if you got into it, it'd be really addicting, um, like any kind of handheld device game is. Um, but obviously, this all will be on PC and Mac as well. Um, it's going to be free. So that is something, and I'm sure you can get like microtransactions to kind of build your points up and stuff up like that. But it is going to be free to play for the most part, uh, which is good. So there's that. Um, and then they talked some more about Fallout 4. Now, Fallout 4 is. I haven't played it. I've played some of it, I haven't played all of it. Um, it's getting a load of big. Uh, updates in the form of workshops so you've got contraptions so you'll be able to build uh, different little things for the environment and things like that and the big one that I would I was most kind of interested in was vault tech um, and that means you can build your own vault and kind of have things going your way almost like a an actual 3d console version of a fallout shelter which is the mobile game that came out with Fallout 4 last year. Now, Fallout 4 as a whole has been the, one of the most successful games last year. If it was the mo it's the biggest uh, Bethesda game I think that's ever come out of the studio and quite rightly so from what I have played of it it is fantastic and the updates that are coming out now we're talking about getting more custom uh, customization we're talking about getting easier access we're talking getting a lot more just stuff for us to play around with so that the game is kind of ongoing regardless of the fact the story might be over so it's kind of a because obviously Fallout 4 is very big on free roam and you know a lot of the Fallout games are but Fallout 4 especially is very big on free roam and I think having these extra little things to do to make your Fallout 4 
experience personal to you is going to be something that I, if I, when I sit down and eventually play the whole game, it's going to be something that I greatly appreciate because I like games where each player's experience is completely different from another player's. So that was really cool. Um, I've already mentioned Fallout Shell, but that's getting a big old update. I haven't played it in a while, but that game is really addicting. But anyway, yeah, that's getting a big update. Um, and then they started going with the big stuff, and I'd say that with a pinch of salt because obviously Fallout 4 is still big stuff, but um, Skyrim Remastered. Now they showed some before and after clips on Xbox and Xbox 360 and PlayStation 4 on what it looked like on there and what it's going to look like on Xbox One and PlayStation. Uh, so they showed it on Play uh, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and then what it's going to look like on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So. They've got a ton of new shaders, they've got a ton of new effects, all the lighting has changed, and it looks absolutely stunning. Now, I am a big fan of Skyrim, I've never played it on the channel, but I think when the remastered version comes out, I will probably play it on the channel. Um, I'm a big fan of the Elder Scrolls world. Um, like, I've played Oblivion, I've played the ones before Oblivion, before, when they were just on PC, and I've played Skyrim, obviously, and I've played um, the Elder Scrolls Online, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Um, but Skyrim had that special thing about it, and it was the game that really kind of introduced free roam into the world of the Elder Scrolls. I mean, Oblivion was my favourite one, because it's more of a story-based game. It's more kind of, it keeps you engaged, and I, you know, that's something I value quite highly in a game. But Skyrim... It's a toss-up between the two. It depends what mood I'm in because when I want to play a really good free roam game with just complete imagination going haywire, Skyrim is what I play. It's it's in, it's an incredible game. And even back when Skyrim was released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, the game looked great. So it's it's strange seeing what we thought were absolutely insane graphics then being bumped up to this next generation of consoles graphics and how they look now and it just looks it looks real and it looks better than the Elder Scrolls Online which I didn't think it would but you know it's kind of it's something that like Skyrim Remastered for next gen consoles is something that's been in high demand and Bethesda have obviously listened and I'm not saying that it's going to be coming out soon and they haven't said that either but it's in the process of being made and eventually we will have Skyrim Remastered and I think that it's gonna be great to replay that and I think they're gonna add a lot of new things they'll probably do like a DLC thing kind of like The Last of Us did with the, the Left Behind DLC they kind of in they'll do like a uh, like a mega collection that you can get all the DLC for it uh, on the PS4 so that's something to look forward to I'll definitely be playing that again when it comes out on next gen consoles so that's Skyrim Remastered um, and then they talked about Prey. Now, I know there's an old game called Prey, and I don't know if there is actually any relation to it. Um, I never played it, but I know there is an old game called Prey. This one looks phenomenal, and I think this was the game that, for me, stole Bethesda's conference. It was the best thing out of it. I think it looks incredible, like the way they presented it in a way that we were given a load of information but actually none of it made sense the puzzle pieces, uh, puzzle pieces didn't fit together so all we really know about it is that it is happening um, it's going to be based around a kind of like space station incident with a lot of alien activity um, and it's made by the same people that I think did dis Dishonored I want to say Dishonored I can't remember. I, I think it was made by the same the same company within Bethesda that did Dishonored. So it looks really good, and it's something that it has intrigued me because we've been given a load of teasers about it, and it's kind of like it's got that sci-fi horror to it. And you know, sci-fi and horror is something that, when it's balanced well, works really well. Um, but if it's off balance, it just it complete like even if it's just slightly, it just completely fails and Prey looks like it's got that perfect balance where you never really know what's going on 
but you know something terrifying is going to happen because it's a sci-fi world and everything's new and everything is shiny and brand new and kind of like out of this world quite literally and everything is kind of terrifying they had these black like tar like monsters and it was like it looked really good and it it, lo it looked like it was all based around one person who had his being taken over um, if you saw from the trailer that I was playing it kind of like you see this character and then this character becomes someone else and someone else takes on his character's form and it's just kind of it looked really confusing and it intrigued me as to how that's gonna work out but anyway Prey looks really good again I don't know when that's gonna be out but it is on the way and it's something I will definitely be looking into playing for you guys um, now, Doom, I haven't played the new Doom. I played the old Dooms, I haven't played the new Doom. Um, I want to, because it's just kind of like a fast-paced, kill-everything kind of game. Um, I've seen I've seen a walkthrough of it, I kind of know what happens, I've seen a walkthrough of it. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a big fan of Markiplier, so, and he did a walkthrough of it, so I've seen his walkthrough, but I do want to play it for myself. Um, Doom has become one of the most popular games on the planet. It came out last month. Um, and it's become one of the most demanded and most kind of like sold games uh, this year. Um, Snap Map is something that they're taking quite seriously and it's something I really like and I mean I haven't personally played it but from what I've seen I like the idea of being able to create your own maps in the same way that you could create, this is going to be a really strange comparison considering the topic of the games, but in the same way that you could create your own world in Little Big Planet and put it online for other people to play that's basically what snap map is um, and there's going to be a ton of updates coming out for it this year and it's going to be all free for the players that have got doom which is fantastic it's not a dlc thing if you've got doom then you get snap map, map, snap map updates for free and the updates will contain things like new objects and new ways of fighting and new weapons and new characters and just new everything new things that you can add into it but you know it's completely free so that's fantastic um, Doom itself as the game is getting um, a new premium DLC which of course will be a DLC pack you have to pay for but it's gonna be called Unto the Evil um, it's gonna have a load of multiplayer maps it's gonna have a load of new weapons some new characters some new armor um, and things like that um, so the kind of standard for a DLC, but it won't be a, a continuation of the story. It won't be anything like that. It will just be more kind of multiplayer um, things, which is a big thing in Doom because Doom, as an arena game, which it primarily is, especially in multiplayer, needs more maps and needs all these different kinds of ways of playing. So there's going to be new new multiplayer modes. There's going to be new maps. There's going to be new all these different things, and you could be a play online with your friends in all these different ways which is really cool and for those of you who haven't played Doom, myself included, I'm going to be doing this when I uh, finish playing Uncharted actually. Uh, the demo is free just this week um, and you can play the first level of it and if you like it then you can go out and buy it or you can just carry on playing the level or whatever um, but I am going to be downloading that and I might do something about it on the channel but they are offering the demo free this week. Now after this week the demo won't actually be available because demos aren't paid for anyway. They are offering a demo that is free just for this week just to give people that haven't played it and people that are kind of in two minds whether they want to play it or not and old Doom fans don't know whether this new Doom is going to be kind of reminiscing of the old Doom that was so great. I can tell you that it is. It is fa it's fantastic. It, it It's great at kind of like um, not mimicking but paying respects to old Doom and you've got the old levels in there as well which are really fun to explore on a next gen console and like the graphical differences between the two are phenomenal um, so if you guys want to try it out and haven't decided whether you want to get it yet because you don't know if it's your taste or not then this week only Doom demo will be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC um, so that might be something to look at if you're in two minds whether you want to get it yet um, the Elder Scrolls Online is getting some very big updates. Um, first of all, there's going to be a new DLC called uh, Dark Brotherhood. For those of you who don't know, Dark Brotherhood was one of, personally, my favourite levels in Oblivion. And we're going to be going over to where that's set and following on a story based around the story that was in Oblivion. Um, and opening the world of Tamriel up even bigger. And in true... 
Bethesda fashion, they're giving us one Tamriel on top of that. And one Tamriel is going to be something that comes out later this year. Um, and it is a big thing for a game like uh, Elder Scrolls Online because what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to take away the barriers of you have to be a certain level to go certain places and it's going to take away level restrictions and it's going to take away anything that would stop someone from playing in a certain place or with certain players just because of their level is taking that away completely all level restrictions will be dot will be gone and all content barriers will be gone as well so as soon as you get out of the tutorial when out when uh, one tamriel comes out you can go and do whatever you want and i think that's fantastic because the Elder Scrolls Online is a game where you kind of want to mold your own adventure and that's what I've done. I mean, I know I started playing it online for you guys on the channel, but I actually have my own account on it um, that I've been playing by myself as well. And it's, you know, having level restrictions is something that games like this has always had. So, you know, you don't really think twice about it, you're used to it. But the thought of not having that and being able to go wherever you want as soon as you get out of that tutorial is something that is it's almost a little bit mind-blowing for me and it's something that I think a game like this needs because it's so vast and you know you want to go like it's one of them games where if you're in the mood you'll go to one place if you're in a different mood you'll go to another place and you know considering the game is as big as it is I think it's really great that they, they're using that to their advantage and giving the players what they want I mean level with like I say level restrictions are something that we've had forever it's something that you don't think about because it's been there forever and the fact that it's now going to be gone I don't think it's going to be missed in the slightest I when I was watching the conference the crowd was going absolutely fucking batshit crazy because this was happening and it was really really nice to see that the people behind the Elder Scrolls Online are doing their best to give the player the biggest experience they can with this game because I know when it came out first um, it didn't have the best uh, reputation, it was kind of like iffy a little bit and it didn't run perfectly and then it came out got its console release uh, which was you know what I play it on, I play it on PS4 so it's kind of like the update for One Tamriel will be out on PC first, it will be out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One a little bit later but it is coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well so that's something that's really cool. Um, Dishonored 2, we kind of talked a little bit about that on there, uh, they talked a little bit about that on there, I uh, say we like I was there, I wasn't, I wish I was, but I wasn't, uh, Dishonored 2, I've, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of the Dishonored game, so I'm not going to say too much, but again, it's one of them games where I can appreciate that it's probably a fantastic game, but it's just not something that I'm overly interested in, um, for me, the best thing that came out of it was that if you pre-order Dishonored 2, uh, then you get the Dishonored kind of remastered collection, uh, free of charge uh, for a limited time only. It's probably just this week um, with running uh, with the running of E3. So if you if you pre-order it, then you can get like Dishonored One, Two, uh, what, uh, Dishonored One. Sorry, sorry, Two is the ones coming. Out. You can get Dishonored One, uh, the remastered edition, completely free on uh, whatever console or PC you buy it on. So that was really cool. Uh, we saw a lot of game. We saw a lot of gameplay, and Dishonored was something that was he was quite heavily emphasised. Uh, last year's E3 um, about the character choice, um, and they've still got the uh, they've still got the function where you can play as either the male or the female main characters, and they've both got their own storylines, and they've both got their own views on the things that are happening within the world. So basically, you've got two completely different stories because of how these two different characters view everything, which is it is a cool thing. You know, I'm not saying Dishonored are the Dishonored games are bad. It's just not something that's interested me, but the gameplay looked phenomenal. So you know, I might pick it up eventually. Um, if I pl if I pre this on a two and play this on a one, um, it might be something that I do. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, Bethesda VR. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big kind of like I'm a fan of VR. Um, I got one of them phone VR things. I'm gonna get a PlayStation VR when it comes out and. Um, Bethesda VR, um, it's not it's not an, it's not another device. It's just the games that they're going to be bringing out, and they were actually kind of playtesting it at E3 this week, which I'm insanely jealous about. Um, Doom and Fallout 4 are both getting VR compatibility, which I think they are the two best games that Bethesda could do it for. Which so it's really really great that they're doing that. Um, 
Doom, I think, would be phenomenal. If you could get that, you could get like a uh, a gun or something. That'd be fantastic. And Fallout 4 with the with the with the Pip Boy on your arm and the gun controller and your VR headset, so you could see everything. That would be phenomenal. It'd be a, it could be an incredible game experience. You can go around and you can wander these wastelands just as you because your character is personalized to you anyway so you yourself would become your character more so than you already have and you're already your character anyway and it's phenomenal I think it's fantastic you know they're bringing you know VR as it is right now has been predicted for the smaller games when it first comes out so the fact that they've got it ready to be played at E3 this week for Doom and Fallout 4 is phenomenal and I you know I can't wait for VR to really really take off and I know it's really popular now with mobile devices and things like that but for console VR you know you've got the Oculus Rift and you've got the, the PS uh, VR set as well and it's going to be phenomenal when it comes out and when it really gets kind of ingrained into us it's going to be something that becomes a sensation I feel like and the games that they're going to bring out for VR with Bethesda look like they're going to be fantastic. I think Fallout 4 probably more so than Doom will be an absolutely incredible experience with uh, the Pip-Boy as well and you know all the, th all the little things that you can get for it. I think it would be a fantastic experience. It would be something like you're just right there in the action and I think that would be incredible. Um, and that's basically it for Bethesda really. You know they, they had a lot of, you know Bethesda's conference was very well balanced. There was a lot of updating stuff that we've already got so we know we're not wasting our money and we're going to get more out of what we've already got as well as punching new stuff in the face you know it's kind of like they've done a really good job this year I'm really happy with the Bethesda kind of like announcements and things like that and not only that I was watching the conference right and the live stream was continuing afterwards and they were doing like a pre-show a post-show continuation of their press conference and Blink-182 played. I mean, I didn't watch the press conference after... I didn't watch it after the press conference, but they arranged for Blink-182 to play. And I think the highlight of my conference was finding out that Blink-182 were bringing out a new album, which I didn't know about. Um, I'm a big fan of Blink-182, so that was really cool uh, for them to do that. And um, Bethesda's live stream, it was just really well balanced. You know, there wasn't anything completely out of this world it was you know I think the best thing like I say was Prey it was something that was new it was fresh um, and it was really nice to see Skyrim being remastered as well and the new things that are going to come out of that and it's really I think the, the thing to hit on hard here is the fact that Bethesda make games that are designed to last a lifetime so when we buy these games like The Elder Scrolls Online like Fallout 4 we expect to be playing these for years and years and years to come and it doesn't matter whether there's another game comes out we'll always go back to the ones that we've been putting all our time into and they understand that so it's nice that they understand that to the point where they know their games are meant to last a lifetime so they'll keep giving us new content so that they do last a lifetime you know it's kind of it's a nice balance you know having new stuff and having new stuff for the old stuff as well is a nice balance and I think that's what Bethesda really excel in um, they did really well this year. I'm really happy with everything that's coming out for Bethesda um, and I'm really excited for the new stuff as well and I'm really excited to see how the games that I already have are going to be expanded because if there's anything I like more about games than the actual gameplay, it's getting my money's worth um, and as bad as that sounds, you know, games aren't cheap. If I'm going to pay pay £50 for a game, I want to play it for a long old time. Um, so it's nice that they take that into consideration. Um, and I'm, re I'm really happy with what Bethesda have got coming out this year. Really, really happy. So, that's going to be it for me for this video. If you haven't watched the conference for this, go click on whatever. I'm not going to put any links because they're there everywhere. Just type in E3 Bethesda uh, live uh, press conference and it'll be there on YouTube, on GameSpot, on IGN, on the, on the E3 website. It's basically everywhere. I want to know what you guys think about what's coming out for Bethesda this year and what I've said about what's coming out for Bethesda this year. I want to know all about that in the comments below. The next video will be about the Ubisoft conference, um, which blew my mind a little bit, I'm not going to lie. And I, know, and I know I said Bethesda's probably still on the show this year, but now I think about it, Ubisoft probably have. Um, 
with the new stuff they've got coming out. So Ubisoft is going to be the video that's coming up next. Uh, it's going to be a little bit later, I think, because uh, it's still going to come out today, but it just might not be. It's a couple of hours because um, I've got some stuff to do in between, but I've still got to kind of like record the video and stuff like that. And then tomorrow, like I said, I'll do Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, and then that'll be it free free for for this year. And then we can just kind of let it all sink in. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it from me for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below. And until the next time you hear from me, guys, as always, stay classy, gamers.